All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP Pavilion laptop. This is a model 14-CE2068ST. All right, we're gonna be using a JIS-1 as well as a JIS-0 screwdriver. Um, as you can see, there are two screws underneath these rubber feet here, and then there are three screws um, at the front here, okay? The customer already had these removed. I don't know if they fell out or they pulled them out. But anyways, usually I just use my fingernail to get underneath and pull those out. Um, you can use uh, pry tools or a flathead screwdriver. Anyways, you want to remove all the screws and keep them in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that. On my desk in the pattern, I remove them. So we got those two in the corners and then we got three along the front. All right, we're going to switch to the JAS0 now and remove the screws on the front. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so we got all those screws out. We are going to switch back to the JS one Popping this cover off usually can be a little bit tricky, but let's see, because sometimes these models are easy and sometimes they aren't. So, usually what I do, if I can, is I'll go over here, get my fingernails in that gap, and then I'll push with my thumb on the palm rest. But, let me see, it might not work with this model, so let's see here. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working. Okay, so this is probably going to be one of those very difficult to remove models. Let's try going from the back. You can see there's kind of a gap there. So if we're lucky, let's see, I'm gonna slide my fingernail in there and try and pull it up, and nope, we're not lucky with that either. Okay, let's try the suction cup method. And doesn't seem like we're getting anywhere with that either. Okay, if I remember correctly on these models, the clips like go under like this, they hook outwards like this and this. So we're gonna try and flex the case a little and pull this up, but it is gonna be a little tricky. Let's try from over here. We'll try the suction cup here and see if we can get my fingernail in there. And there we go. Okay, again, you can use pry tools. You don't have to use um, fingernails, obviously, whatever works for you. Um, and then I'm gonna pull, push down with my thumbnail and pull up with my other fingers and kind of help flex it with the suction cup here. And you can see a lot of the clips are coming out. Okay, I'm gonna try and pull there. And these clips are all coming out. So the back ones work seem to come out easier all right and there we go and now we're getting towards the front the front clips are still being quite a bit of a pain um, so usually what I do is I'll kind of get my hand in there on the cover I'll grab here and kind of pull it as I kind of pull up and hold the rest of it down and sometimes moving it around kind of wiggling it pulling it forward and backwards we'll get it out but let's see and sometimes also flexing it but Okay, there we go, we got part of it. I'm gonna kind of get over there more. Okay, you can see this is kind of being a pain. Be careful where you grab inside because the motherboard and stuff is all in there. Okay, so yep, that's being difficult. Let's rotate it and try and get this side out. So kind of lift it up and kind of pull. And it's being tricky, there we go. And there we go, okay. So we got the bottom cover off. We're just gonna get a quick look inside. I actually cloned the hard drive in advance so that I can swap it out and upgrade it to an SSD. Uh, let me clean some of this dust off real quick because there's some dust under this cover. And since we got it open, we don't wanna just leave that dust in there, okay? So we clean the bottom cover off a little bit. We'll clean the fan as well. The fan actually has quite a bit of dust in it. It's not too visible in camera, but there you go. Okay, look how bad that is. All right, so I'm gonna use a toothbrush. I'm gonna hold the middle of the fan slightly so that it allows for a little bit of pressure while I brush. Okay, and I'm brushing in one direction, and then we're gonna go ahead and switch and brush in this direction. Okay, the reason why we do that is so we can get the front of the blades and the back of the blades, okay? And then I'm going to use an air blower to blow the dust out into the trash can next to me. So let me do that real quick. All right.
I might have to actually pull the fan out here to clean it better. Um, but let me show you what it looks like now. All right, much better than before. Okay, um, let's see. If the fan comes out easily, we'll try and clean that up as well. Looks like there's three screws. Um, I know somebody's probably going to say, oh, you should remove the battery first. But uh, the main thing, if you're removing the battery, uh, or if you're working on computers, is this LCD LVDS connector. If you're going to mess with that, you do need to remove the battery and then open up the laptop and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to make it safer to work on. Um, if you're somewhat clumsy or you're worried um, that you might accidentally drop something on here, then you can also, yeah, remove the battery and then press and hold the power button. All right. Anyways, you can see we can lift the fan out. All right. And if you really wanted to pull it out, you can get that connector out of the way. But uh, we're just going to quickly kind of brush in here and dust that out because the customer main thing they were asking me to do is the SSD. This kind of thing I just do just so that their computer doesn't overheat or get messed up. Okay. A lot of places don't really even do this. They just do the minimum. But there we go. We got that out. We'll put this fan back in or down. All right. And get those screws back on. Okay. Um, after this, I am going to show a close up of all the components. I'm not going to be removing the battery. Um, at least I don't think. Because, yeah, the main thing I'm going to be doing is upgrading the hard drive to an SSD. Looks like someone changed the RAM inside here. So um, it's not the original RAM. But uh, let me go ahead and pop that stick of RAM out just so you can see. If you're wondering, the battery model right here, HT03XL. Let me actually get a thumbnail here as well. Okay, it looks like you got two screws, or three screws, so two here, one here, and then you got one screw on either corner here. Once you remove all the screws for the battery, you can go underneath the plastic and just pull straight up and it will um, disconnect from those pins. All right, so the RAM, let me zoom in a little bit. If you want to remove it, you pull these two tabs to the side, pops up, and you can take it out. And this is, here you go. Uh, DDR4, 3200, okay, I don't know what the original was, but there's a 16 gig stick. Again, we're not going to be pulling everything out, I'm just going to kind of give you a little close, quick look up, or a uh, quick look inside. You got the DC jack, charge port connector here, runs underneath the hinge, so if you want to replace that, you do have to remove the screws here and open the hinge. Usually what I do is I open the laptop slightly, take the screws out, and then close the laptop, and the hinge will stay slightly up so you can easily pull it out. Alright, CPU is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't upgrade it unless you have some special crazy skills that most people won't have or be able to do. There's also some models that use a GPU here. You can see where they would mount the GPU and the uh, video card memory. And then those models will have a second fan there. You also have the one, sp there's one speaker here, connects right there. And then it looks like a cable runs along underneath to this other speaker here. Okay. Um, then you got the little lock port. I don't know anybody that really uses that, but has that. Two USB ports and the headphone audio jack um, connected to the motherboard with this cable. This has a little flip latch that you lift up and then you can pull the cable out. I'm not going to take that out, but uh, if you want to see how to remove those, I have a whole bunch of videos showing those kinds of things. Um, there's a lot of little boards under here. It looks like there's an SD card slot. Um, there's two connectors here, so I'm not sure which one's going to the SD card slot, but I'm pretty sure one of them is. And then the other one is probably going to like the touchpad or trackpad because we do have the keyboard cable here and the keyboard backlight cable there. So this is probably for the trackpad and that's probably for the SD card. All right. Everything else seems to be attached to the motherboard. There is a slot for an M.2 SSD here. Um, I believe it should support M.2 PCIe NVMe. It doesn't really say. Um... That actually probably would have been a better choice for me to clone to, um, but the customer wanted me to use a regular drive for cost-wise, um, so we are going to replace that. Um, and yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and flip this latch up here, 
And then we're going to pull this cable slightly up and back. And there we go. We disconnected the hard drive. Of course, if you're doing this, you do want to make sure your computer is off. Um, but again, you don't have to remove the battery for this. All right, there we go. We'll remove that screw and we'll remove this screw. Again, these are JAS-1 screws. Okay, once we got those two screws out, I'm going to use the metal bracket to lift it up. So just like this, and it goes up at an angle, and then you can kind of slide it out. And you have to slide it back because, if you see, these things have these little feet here. Okay, we're going to have to transfer this bracket over to the new hard drive or SSD. Be very careful with this connector because it is pretty fragile. So we're going to go ahead and get this out. Okay, then we can take this metal bracket and we're going to transfer it over to the SSD. So you want the pins facing this way when you put this bracket on. Okay. Oop, I was picking up the wrong screws. Okay, we'll get this in. I like to loosely fit it first and then get the second one. Oop, come back here. Okay, hold that and get the second screw in. Then we can go ahead and tighten that into place. And tighten that into place. Good. This one, um, it just pops right off. You can just pull on this and it pops out. It has this little foot here. Um, looks like it bent a little bit. It's very flimsy. So be careful with that. All right, then we can go ahead and just stick this on there. All right, so we got the hard drive set up like that or the SSD. Next, we need to remove this, but you want to be careful again, this thing is pretty fragile. So usually what I do is if I can, I get my fingernail in that little gap there, and then I can kind of pry it like this, so you can see. And then um, you have this little gap, so I'll work my way over to the other side and just slide my fingernail in there, and you can see it pops out pretty easily. Okay, then we can go ahead and work our way back over here, and work our way back over there, and just keep wiggling it until it pops out and you can grab the sides here but you don't want to grab close to the cable because you might damage it so there we go this is just a two and a half inch SATA hard drive we're moving it to a two and a half inch SATA SSD and we'll get this uh, new connector on or the connector onto the new SSD and then to get the SSD and you just slide it with the feet down first like this Okay, push it into place and then lower this. Now we just get the two screws back in. Very simple and straightforward. Okay. Um, if you do disconnect the main battery, keep in mind that it also acts as the CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real-time clock battery, whatever you want to call it. Um, so if you disconnect that, the BIOS is going to reset. And that also makes it so your computer takes a while to start up again. So keep that in mind. It will take a while to boot if you do that. The screen will stay black for a while. All right, hopefully you saw how I put that in. You kind of have to go down at an angle and then you can slide it straight in. And there we go, latch that in place. All right, but um, again, like if you remove the battery, the BIOS will reset, it will take a while. Um, so keep that in mind, just be patient, and then it will tell you like to press enter to continue or whatever. Okay, anyways, we're going to get the last uh, or the bottom cover back on. So we'll go ahead and angle like this. We'll push these clips back in. can be a little tricky, but there we go. All right, and it helps to kind of push inwards as you're kind of pushing down. Okay, just like this. All right, all the clips are latched in. Now we just gotta get the screws back on and we should be good to go. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If that's pretty much it you're welcome to stay i will um power it on just to make sure everything is working but other than that that's all there is to it all right that one and the last one okay and there we go all right so let's go ahead and flip this guy over and we'll Open this up and see what we got. All right, it's powering up. 
and the screen's coming on. It's telling you to, I don't know why it's going to this. It should just boot. We're going to go to, oh, I know why. Um, I turned off secure boot. So we need to go in here. Um, system configuration, boot options, secure boot enable. Okay. And then exit saving changes. And hopefully now it will boot just fine. Otherwise, I might have to clone it externally over to the other drive. But I think that should be good. There we go. HP. And there's the spinning. So that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. All right. Let's drop this. Bye.